Was anyone ever scary or mean at Area 51? Well, I mean, Area 51 is a pretty serious place, and there's not an actual gate, but there's these two signs um, saying that you're not allowed, it's forbidden to trespass. Wow, these guys aren't kidding. Use of deadly force is authorized. And on top of the sand dunes, there was these camo dudes, these men in these Hummers with machine guns, and they actually had the right to shoot at you if you cross that line. So, I mean, that's not serious. I don't know what it is. Were you scared? I guess I was a bit intimidated to go, but when we got out of the car, we were like, we're here to film a show for children, <laughs> and we're just going to be very, like, we're not going to cross the line, so don't be nervous. So we kind of let them know what we were doing. People report seeing strange lights and things flying in the sky around here. I'm actually really creeped out. My biggest fear is being abducted by aliens. My biggest fear is no longer being abducted by aliens. I guess it was something that I was really scared of when I was younger. I, I think I watched too many alien abduction movies with my brother and they just traumatized me. So you made a crop circle in one of your investigations. Was that yeah. uh, easy to do or was it really tough? It wasn't really hard, but it was interesting. Like we had a wooden plank and we had these ropes hanging there and you just kind of stomp. And you just do that and make whatever pattern you want. And did it take a long time to make your crop circle? Um, yeah, it took a while because we were doing it at night too because we didn't want to get caught. We wanted to make sure it seemed like it was real so we could fool people. So it took a while. I think it was like an hour or something like that. And did anyone believe that your crop circle was made by aliens? The person that we interviewed that believed in the crop circles actually thought that that was real. We were driving past them and they told us, actually the other night, there was a crop circle that just appeared just over there. And we were like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> did you ever tell them that you made it? No. You know what, it's sometimes people need to believe in what they believe, so it's not really right to bust their bubble. In Area 51, you went to some really crazy alien stores. Can you tell me uh, what the coolest thing is you saw in one of these stores? The alien stores at Area 51 were just filled with such crazy alien memorabilia. There was alien driver's licenses. Um, they had funky glasses and spaceships everywhere. But I think more than anything, the people in the store, they were just so full of life. and. You almost kind of wondered what they were doing there, and if they were maybe aliens themselves, they were so crazy. <laughs> and do you think that the military might be hiding evidence of aliens? I think that the military must be hiding something, because whether it's evidence of aliens or just some sort of something that some things that are unknown to us as a general public, because either I don't know, maybe. They don't want us to find out, or maybe just for our own good, so there's not this mass hysteria that there's aliens out there or whatever it is is going on. You know, maybe they just want to figure out what's going on first and then be able to deliver the information. What's the most believable sighting uh, story that you've come across? The most believable alien story that we've investigated, I think, was in Brazil, at least to me. Um, this family that we interviewed were just so genuine with their experience and what they said. Just after midnight, the night before the sighting, farmers at this nearby farm saw something very strange in the sky. What happened that night? She says she was startled by the sound of farm animals running. There was no reason for them to lie about something, and, and I think that says a lot, because I think a lot of people, you know, can juice their story because, you know, for whatever reason, a lot of people do that. But this family was so completely genuine, and there was no reason for them to lie. And I believed them, I really believed them. People that you spoke to in the government or in the military, were they ever kind of didn't want to answer your questions or were mean? I think mean is something that kind of comes with the job sometimes, just because I can imagine so many people, reporters, other people asking them all these questions all the time and... Let's see if the police have anything to say about it. This report documents the sighting of an unidentified flying object by one of your officers. Yes, I'm familiar with that case. Were the police officially searching for a UFO in Shag Harbor? I can only speak to what's in the report, and it doesn't say what the police were searching for. It's like if somebody asks you the same question a hundred times, you're going to get kind of fed up by the hundred and first, right? So 
I think they have a right to be in some ways. And sometimes, yeah, there were people that were just a little impatient. Do you think that aliens exist? I think that they have to. I don't know. I think that the universe is too big for us to only be here. It doesn't make any sense to me. So I think there's some kind of life somewhere else. Um, I definitely think aliens exist, especially doing so many stories, investigating so many alien stories on the show. I mean, the universe is so huge. How, how can't there be? I think there's so much out there that we don't know about. But have you ever found any proof? Not yet. How do you come up with the lab ideas? Well, it's not just me who comes up with the lab ideas. There's a whole team of us. Uh, there's Skeptical Steve, Suspicious Stu, uh, and a couple other ghosts and aliens and things like that. And uh, we all look at what the mystery is for that show, uh, whatever Araya and Christina are investigating, and we try to come up with a lab that um, will help them solve their mystery in some way. You always wear a blue shirt. Yes. Is blue your favorite color? I think my favorite color is transparent. Can you tell me what your favorite lab was and why? My favorite lab there was the alien hoax. Uh, actually, it wasn't an alien hoax so much as a fake UFO hoax. But all we did was send a balloon up into the sky with some lights on it. Three, two, one, launch the spaceship. And it was outside of a movie theater, so we knew there were going to be a whole bunch of kids coming out of the theater after this movie let out. Do you see it there? Yes. Something floating over there. Look up there. It works. And it was amazing to see how one or two people noticed it, got a little weirded out by it, and then all of a sudden, everybody around started to gather. Yo, let's go see what it is. Come on. Oh, I'm freaked out. Yeah. They couldn't figure out what this thing was. And it was an interesting example of how uh, uh, just one or two people experiencing a mystery can grow and grow and grow. And who knows what these people told their friends the next day. They might have gone to their friends and said, I saw something floating in the sky with lights, and then the story spreads all over the city and all it was was a balloon and a couple of glow sticks. So can you tell me which was your favorite V-file? My favorite V-file was uh, a letter we got from somebody asking if it's possible that the government was covering up, that they've seen aliens and, and gotten UFOs. And um, the reason I like that V-file is because I got to eat like 30 bananas. Of course, maybe there's nothing in Roswell for the government to cover up. <laughs> There's no proof that aliens crashed there. And even if they did, I doubt the government could keep a secret for this long. Behind the scenes. Shooting the opening, reshooting it because of uh, my hair. So we're shooting the, the opening of the show again in the woods. And uh, there's lots of bugs, lots of them, getting all bitten. We got everybody here, the whole crew. There we go, smoke machine's going off. Starting the smoke machine. There is Stacy walking off. Stacy, actually, if you notice in the opening credits, the opening of the show, uh, there will be a claw, a monster's claw. But really, Stacy. There's the claw. That's the creepy creature. <laughs> yeah, there it is. So you're wondering where we got that monster, who it is. There she is. That's how the smoke comes. There's a smoke machine that puts out smoke. So you get that creepy look right there. Ooh, creepy, eh? I know, it's scary. Looking over. Being direct to look over. Complete blackness. From the beginning? Okay. All right. Here we go. Walking through. You're getting the exclusive behind the scenes look at Mystery Hunters. What we do. Stacy so there. Also, not only is she the monster, doubling up as a smoke person. <laughs> but it's waving the smoke over. It's a team effort. This is a team effort. We all take part in this, and I wouldn't have it any other way.
Anyways, I'm gonna be in the trailer, so uh, if they need me, they can find me there. Alrighty.